since winning his election, Putin has gone mask off with the Russian military, telling conscripts to their face, you guys are cannon fodder. But just what happens when you tell a military they're entirely expendable? Well, according to some leaked reports, the Russian military, at least the soldiers, aren't exactly taking this news lying down. There's been a spate of incidents where Russian troops have turned their guns on each other that have been reported in the last couple weeks. And it is it a sign of a crumbling Russian military infrastructure? We're going to talk about it right now. So this is the overall story. Russian troops reportedly massacred by fellow soldiers is the headline. Um, but this is a spate of incident incidents in which Russian troops have turned their guns on their fellow soldiers, right? And this isn't the first time we've seen this. We talked earlier about how Cuban mercenaries responding to the brutal treatment and degrading treatment by their Russian commanders actually killed their Russian commander. But it's not just foreign mercenaries that are uh, protesting, more than protesting, uh, fighting back against Russian brutality. Uh in one Russian soldier was actually suspected of shooting dead six of his fellow soldiers in eastern Ukraine, according to some reports. And the manhunt is currently underway. The soldier apparently shooting his uh, fellow soldiers and then dipping. If he's smart, which he doesn't appear to be, uh, he's going to he would want to surrender to the Ukrainians, the one group of people who would probably give him a medal for killing Russians. Uh, but this is is interesting because it's coming on the heels of another instance in which a Russian officer is actually being uh, tried at right now for killing seven soldiers under his command after, get this, he threw a grenade into their room last year. Now, these are some of the most common instances uh, of sort of fratricide or fragging. And fratricide, well, fratricide just means that soldiers on the same in the same army kill, killing each other. It could be by accident or it could be intentional. Now, there's been a lot of talk about this low morale among Russian troops, right? But it's a really um, disturbing trend to see this level of Russian on Russian violence, because I think it's indicative of a, a serious degradation around the Russian military. Um, this individual, this soldier, uh, and, and here's, this is just quintessential Russian military. The individual who, who is on the run currently is a 57 year old junior Sergeant named in telegram as, uh, as Yuri G has gone on the run after shooting six service members in his howitzer artillery battalion in the, you know, the DPR region of annexed Ukraine. Um, they think he may have an AK-12 assault rifle with a silencer and ammunition. And they seem, it seems like Russian police think he's running into Russia proper. But what's interesting is that, one, 57 years old, okay, Imagine you are pushing 60 and you get roped in to this bizarre special military operation as a junior sergeant. And it's interesting because we've talked about the fact that actually he's not the worst treated soldiers in the Russian military. Howitzer artillery battalions generally are treated much better by the Russian military because they're specialist and the Russian military needs to keep them combat effective, right? Because the it, artillery is a technical skill. He's not an assault unit with, a, and those are the ones we've talked about where morale is lowest. Those are units that soldiers are sent to as punishment. This is, if he's caught, this is likely where he will go. Um, or he will be sent, or, or individuals are sent to those units because they're recruited out of penal colonies. Those units have casualty rates on a typical mission between 40 and 70%. And as a result, right, that it not only does it crush morale, but Russia is just admitted openly to these troops, you will not survive this mission. You'll be remembered as heroes. They won't be remembered as heroes, guys. We've seen the footage. They don't die as heroes. Most of the time, they never even get close enough to see the Ukrainians who are killing them. Um, they're just targets in a shooting gallery. And the casualty rates that are that high really affect the psyche. To give you a perspective, on Norman in, in Omaha Beach, on D-Day, 
there were about 34,000 troops that crossed and only about, only about 45, around 3,500 became casualties, right? About 10%. So the most brutal fighting of the, of the first or the second world war, the opening, the first day opening the Western front, you saw about one in 10 soldiers become casualties. So Russia is operating its Storm Z units with four times that amount on the low end. That should tell you exactly the state of the morale of Russian troops. Yeah, Russian, there's something about the Russian spirit that just it makes them immune to suffering. But yo, everybody wants to live. Like living is better than dying. I don't know what to tell you. And so, and when you're 57, you can imagine your tolerance for taking this level of BS is probably pretty limited. So of course, now why would he shoot six of his fellow service members? They probably, they, I sort of suspect that they're probably bullying him, being just shit bags, or it may just be, they may have tried to stop him from defecting or some other reason, right? He may have simply just resented the entire Russian military and struck out against the people closest around him. But the other story is of a former pl acting platoon commander. This right there. So is an officer, a junior officer's position was a sergeant, Dmitry Lobikov, who killed seven of his subordinates and injured 10 others during New Year's celebrations, January 13th and 14th of 2023. Allegedly, he was unhappy with what he saw when he went to check on the troops at the barracks, took out a grenade, pulled its pin, and asked one of the soldiers to put it back in place. Oh my God. Obviously, the soldier failed to do so. The soldier had not learned how to do it. After cursing him, Lobakov went into the corridor where he's accused of throwing a grenade into the next room where soldiers from a different platoon were sleeping, detonating gas cylinders, cylinders killing seven men, and destroying part of the barracks. It sounds... This is the kind of caliber of soldier that Russia has, not just, not just in its military, but leading its troops. You can imagine... Right, you, you can kind of draw a thread here. Imagine your platoon leader is this fucking idiot, right? And you're a 57-year-old who has to work under this dude and has to deal with these other idiots, right? And yeah, it sounds like the, the, the average Russian being confronted with the reality of exactly who is fighting in the Russian military after... Uh, almost three years and by some accounts around a hundred thousand killed this is who's left a bunch of drunks and idiots and this is just a just really emblematic i think of not that the russian military doesn't have people listen let's let's be honest the russian military has an uncanny ability to generate more human beings to fight it's truly exceptional um but the problem is, is that you're so far removed the, the 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 power curve goes like this, right? So you lose your elite airborne troops. This is 2022, right? The elite airborne troops get killed. Then you bring in some reserve airborne troops, maybe some guys that were, you know, earlier in the training pipeline, maybe units that weren't fully ready to deploy. Then you get units who just finished their training. Then you get units who get 10 to 15 days of training. And finally, you're getting prisoners who you give rudimentary combat training to. And once you're at that low point, there's not much lower you can go is the problem, right? So, yeah, the question is, can Russia still keep scooping up addicts and degenerates to fight these wars and just get killed by Ukrainians, right? Will the Ukrainians run out of munitions? That's literally, by the way, guys, if you, there's a lot of talk about like, oh, the Ukrainian shortage in artillery and da, 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 da. Understand the reason that this situation has happened is because the Ukrainians killed so many Russians that they ran out of bullets in everything. That is what happened, okay? That is the situation that they found themselves in, right? And the West... The West's problem, fundamentally, is that they said, listen, we were sure that if you shot 
If you killed 50,000 Russians, we're like, yo, we were sure. That's the whole Russian military. If you kill 100,000 Russians, that's their entire active duty force. 87% of the Russian military who was in uniform on the day of the invasion are dead. And so just like the state of the Russian military is absolutely preposterous. And it makes sense that it's, it's, you know, people have been saying, oh, it's about to collapse for, for three years. It's not about to collapse. Like it is, but it is just a lumbering, barely functional behemoth that just shoves people and things at the Ukrainians in the hopes that the Ukrainians will fuck up and they'll be able to take some territory, which is exactly what they did for the past several months. And you can see that it's not just light infantry, right? Russia, Russian pilots can't seem to stop hitting their own personnel. Russian air defense crews can't stop hitting their own aircraft. It's just hopeless. Now, again, does it mean that that Russia can't keep generating more and more troops? It can. It can. But it's going to have to deal with this reality. Anyway, guys, if you if you are being feel like you are overwhelmed, you can't cope. Actually, this sounds like a mental health crisis line. You should call a mental health crisis line. Um, but if you're feeling just a little frustrated, but like not, you know, not like some of these guys, and you want a little energy boost, you can check out Strike Gum. Strike Gum is my product. It's it, it, it. Here's the thing: when I was in Afghanistan, I had to carry around these cans of this stuff called Rip It. They were like a military issue energy drink. They were revolting. And I was like, there's got to be a better way to get caffeine. So now here we are 12 years later, and I finally do it. Worked with, it's made in the USA. I worked with the manufacturer in Denver. We created Strike Gum together. 100 milligrams alpha GPC, 90 milligrams of caffeine in each individual piece. This thing, five of them are in a pack. This has as much caffeine as a Red Bull or an Amp Energy. So check it out, strikegum.com, or you can get it on Amazon. Just search for Strike Gum. Anyway, huge thank you to all the members, uh, Colonel Tier members, the Lieutenant Tier members, uh, all the members of combatvetnews.com, and I will see you guys in the next one. Cheers.